It's that time of the year that many of you start your first year associate positions. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the eight common mistakes junior attorneys, especially first year associates at big law firms make with the hope that you won't fall into that category. Before we get started, please do me a big favor. If you like to get more content like this, go ahead and like this video. I really appreciate it. YouTube algorithm app appreciates it. And also, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. All right, let's get started. First, junior associates don't continue their education and skill building. When they start at the big law firm, they view it as the end of the road. It is, they have reached the ceiling. They've studied you know, in law school, they took the bar, and now it's here. Gonna make money, pay off the loans, and they brace themselves for the cloud of doom of the billable hour and you know, uh, just working around the clock. And sure, that might be the reality, but you will do yourself a huge disservice by not realizing that you have now arrived at a new floor and there's a whole new ceiling that you have to strive towards. And by dedicating yourself to lifelong learning, um, not only will you succeed and be a stellar, not just associate, but attorney, but you will ensure your happiness because it is really in that progress that we find fulfillment. So whether it's you know, your networking skills or you just want to learn how to navigate the politics of a firm, learn about the structure of the firm, uh, become an expert in a certain practice area, uh, become a better litigator or negotiator, you should identify books, relationships, conferences, maybe work with a coach. Um, in some of the best partners have executive coaches. But identify ways you can continue your skill set um, on many, in many different areas and you will be both more successful and happier. Second, junior associates don't pay attention to the big picture. Now you might be thinking, I can barely do the work they put on my desk. How can I possibly pay attention to the bigger picture? I don't even know what the bigger picture is and that's okay. The way you pay attention to it by asking questions and showing curiosity in the topic. The big picture can include the reason why you're being asked to do that assignment you don't want to do. It could be the bigger legal strategy or the business of the client and why is this important to the client. It could be about how your supervising attorney or the, the partner um, manages the business relationship, the client, how they manage their cases. How does the firm operate as a whole? Pay attention to the bigger picture, even if it's just simply learning just a tiny bit every week it will make you more successful in the long term. Third, they have bad interpersonal skills. And this is really broad, guys. Um, it can, this can mean that you um, make bad jokes and you, know, you don't know what's appropriate. You're not, a, um, a lot of junior associates bring in the same um, neediness that they had as a summer associate. But now that you're an attorney, now that you've come in uh, as a colleague and you're not a summer associate, your behavior also needs to uh, incorporate that new level of maturity. So no bad jokes. I've had associates who tell me, well, so-and-so can do this. And I tell them, well, that person is a partner. Kind of the same way that when you were interviewing, you couldn't ask certain questions, but then once you got the offer, it was okay. As our bargaining power improves, maybe we can get like a, a lighter filter. But for now, you're brand new, so watch the inappropriate humor. And um, also on the other side of this, some first-year associates, just because they're just, you know, just overwhelmed with all the work, 
they become really aloof and cold and you want to still have you know excitement gratitude when you're sending an email ask somebody how your how their weekend was and you know wish them a good day uh, don't forget the human um, aspects of practicing law and you obviously have had good interpersonal skills to get you to this level of getting the offer then getting the permanent offer after the summer uh, being a summer so don't just lose that because now you think this is it. Fourth, they don't make relationship building and um, uh, networking a priority. So you might not have those bad interpersonal skills. You might be like grateful and enthusiastic and do a good job. But if you're not proactively seeking mentorship and um, reaching out to uh, classmates and building your network, um, you are also going to miss out long term. I do understand that your main focus should be building your skills and doing good work. That's absolutely true. But you got to commit to a certain amount of time every week. It could be 30 minutes, 30 minutes a week, you know, um, let's say 12 p.m. on Thursdays. For 30 minutes, you're going to close your door and you're going to work on relationship building. This can be uh, going on LinkedIn and accepting your you know, invites and or it just could be circling with a couple of classmates who have gone to a different firm. Uh, it could be signing up for a networking event and it could also be internal stuff, right? You know, uh, making sure you reach out to somebody from a different practice group that you worked with during the summer and now you don't work with them. Um, this is not a video on networking, but as those of you who know me from uh, all my networking spiels, you know I don't believe in gaming it. Relationship building should simply mean that, relationship building. You are nurturing your relationships, you're making new interesting contacts. So um, dedicate a certain time a week for it in a certain amount of time schedule it because if you don't schedule it it's not going to get done and then keep track of it like in the, as you are you know maybe you just want to become an expert in securities and you want to make contacts in the field and part of your networking is to go and see who's on that committee or you know with the state bar or aba that counts um it, it like you know maybe you want to find somebody who wrote a brilliant article and reach out and set up a time to talk to them. I'm spending a lot of time on this one because this is absolutely important. And um, uh, the really success, I have seen attorneys with mediocre skills, but excellent networking achieve a lot more than the reverse. Number five is junior associates don't delegate. For those of you who are at big law firms, even though you're at the bottom of the hierarchy, there are paralegals, there are um, uh, assistants, and ultimately there's soon be summer associates you can delegate work with. And sometimes it is frustrating to delegate work because you know if you do it yourself, it will be faster. But if you don't delegate, you will have to do it forever. So the right attitude would be if you do like to ask yourself, should I delegate this? And it might mean that the first time you give this to your assistant and the first time you give this to a summer associate and as you get more senior to the more junior associates, they spend like if it would take you an hour, but now they've spent an hour and then you spend an hour fixing their work. It doesn't seem to like make any sense, right? But we're not looking at the short term, we're looking at the long term. Because if you then work with this person and you go give them feedback, maybe in a month they can spend you know, an hour on it and you spend nothing. And now your one hour is open to do more high level work. The final point on this rule is that you should um, find out what resources the firm has. Some firms have uh, a department called document services and um, 
these guys really can help run table of authorities on your briefs and they know all the different pleading rules and they can you know make you be a little faster with things that you for getting things done um, they're like you know, there are office services that can make binders and make things look prettier so ask your assistant sit down with your assistant at the beginning or virtually sit down with them and ask them what do you do for your other attorneys what other resources does the firm have where we can use to make things go faster um, how should we uh, coordinate should we meet you know 15 minutes every morning should we meet for like a longer time every week and go over what's coming up what can i do to make it easier for you to help me number six junior associates don't take their evaluations seriously enough but they also take it too seriously what do i mean by that that means emotionally when they get that evaluation and the evaluation says good job but you should do this this and this and that they start getting you know defensive or even if they don't act it out they get really upset on the inside it's just super personal so in that regard they're taking it emotionally seriously but they don't take it seriously enough meaning they don't sit objectively and try to think is there some merit to what this you know uh, um, this suggestion is asking me to do or have i seen this before maybe there's something that you know now has come up two or three times you know both in informally when you turn in projects as well as when you get your official evaluation and i have seen this again and again where when somebody is a fifth year associate or they're up for a promotion the reason they don't make it is because a certain improvement they haven't made and it's existed since day one i have heard from law firms who say well she just wouldn't be able to make it here because she's too tentative she doesn't take ownership on the matters and these things existed from year one year two evaluations so if you see something more than once you definitely should pay it some attention and ask the person who's giving you the feedback how do you suggest i improve this and if they're not super helpful talk to somebody talk to a mentor talk to a career coach research some classes or books because sometimes with a slight tweak with a slight calibration not only can we succeed and fix that problem but you will be much happier uh, instead of just sitting inside that problem and feeling hopeless about it next number seven they have unresolved personal issues and they bring those unresolved personal issues to the workplace we all we all have certain issues certain tendencies things that you know happen to us maybe in our childhood it doesn't even have to be anything traumatic but it's habits that we picked up along the way and we bring it to the workplace we're not aware of it it's subconscious like maybe if we just threw a fit as, as a child or we just you know we were um, or self-sabotaged a lot of times when i work with my attorney clients i see that you know uh, those who are open to a little bit of digging in on the life coaching front there are things that derail them when it comes to getting promoted when it comes to asking for opportunities how they accept constructive criticism and ultimately their success and being able to achieve their goals whether it's to climb up the ladder and become partner or uh, intentionally move on to a you know a different opportunity so do some digging like in you know, a lot of attorneys think mental health and um therapy is only for crisis time but the same way that you know in a in a marriage if you go to premarital counseling and when things are great you work on making things better it's so much easier than when a marriage falls apart it's the same thing in your professional 
um, life. You have to be a happy person before you can be a happy lawyer. Many times, it's not, it's not really the long hours that um, make junior associates unhappy. It's the atmosphere and we are part of that atmosphere. And my advice always to people before tr deciding to change firms is to, to figure out what it is that it's really bothering us because if it's really an unresolved personal issue, we're just going to take it with us to the next place. Finally, number eight, junior associates don't pace themselves. They arrive at the job and they're ready to go. And it's really nice. It's the enthusiasm is awesome. But in that process of trying to do everything, they run it like a quick sprint and they burn themselves out. Especially for those of you who think you might want to make partner at a firm, this is going to be a six to 12 year marathon. And you got to have patience with the process and have patience towards yourself and be kind towards yourself as you're running this race. Because it doesn't matter how well you do everything else we talked about. You make sure you do good work, you network, you uh, continue your education and building your skills. If you neglect yourself and you're not here, then it won't matter, right? So you want to make sure you know, on you identify the very things you need to do, not just to be a happy person or a lawyer, but to maintain your basic physical and emotional well-being. And I can't tell you what to do because I'm not you. You only know. You know what your limits are. There are people who can sleep five, six hours a day and be okay. I can't. I need like in a, my seven to eight hours. And if I go for a few days at like six, my performance will drop. You don't want to be that first year associate who just says yes to everything, but then passes out at trial. And now the team has to, you know, frantically figure out where to take this, where to take you to the hospital. You want to know what those limits are. A lot of times when your supervising attorneys email you and they ask you to do something, if they don't have a deadline in there, they might not be thinking. They just are trying to get it out of their head, off of their to-do list, and they're sending it to you. And it's okay to write and say, will tomorrow be okay? Will Monday be okay? And they might even write back and say, yeah, within the next week. So don't run yourself to the ground because you just don't know what's expected of you uh, because that supervising attorney doesn't know that you don't know. They're not, they have their own thousand things they have to do and they're not actively thinking about uh, how to manage your stress. So you know you and you know what your limits are and make sure even if you get, get super busy, like it's that kind of busy when you're sleeping at the office, it's that kind of busy when you're at trial or you're closing a deal, even if it's just 20 minutes, 30 minutes of you make sure you're eating right, making sure you are um, going out for a run. I've known attorneys who have made it to the most successful ranks of the legal profession, and I have observed them. It does not matter how busy they are. They might not be able to take three hours for themselves, but even if it's just 20 minutes to go for a run, and that's what they need, they'll make sure they do that because then you can come back to it more effectively. When things get also that busy, a lot of junior associates freak out and think, oh my God, this is my life now, what have I done? And I'm not gonna be able to sustain this. And they lose perspective that that trial, that case might settle. That deal will close and maybe the next deal won't be so bad. So don't immediately start thinking, I can do this. I got to get out of this. It might just be the nature of right now, these next few weeks. I asked this attorney, this amazing attorney that I had the privilege of working with, and he had been able to sustain billing a really high number of hours. I wasn't even close to that. And at the same time, he would leave every day at 6 p.m. when he was in town. He would coach, he was coaching his son's um, baseball or soccer, I don't remember, uh, team. And I asked him, like, you know, you don't get worked up. And we were on this case, it was a stressful case. 
And he said, I take it one day at a time. And I think it's really great advice to make sure you pace yourself and you don't neglect yourself. You're going to make, you're going to, you know, stay cognizant of what you need. But during those times where things get super, super hectic and busy at a law firm, don't waste your emotional energy thinking about how do I escape? Put your emotional energy on doing the best you can for the day. So I'm going to leave you with one of my favorite poems to bring this point home. It's a poem by Horace and it goes like this. Happy the man and happy he alone. He who can call today his own. He who secure within can say, tomorrow do thy worst for I have lived today. And living today can just be doing the best you can do by yourself by and by your clients and your colleagues and just dealing with tomorrow when it comes. I hope this was helpful to all of you who had just started or about to start your first year uh, associate positions. Please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions or if I can help in any way, uh, shoot me an email and, or um, just leave a comment below and I will try to answer all your questions. Until we meet again, stay well.